All right, guys, so welcome back. So I just uploaded a short of this guy running. And it's funny because as soon as I start recording, it starts making a racket. And as soon as I turn it off, it starts humming because it finds its center point on the um, aluminum plate back here or the metal plate back here. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. Although I don't think I need it because I took Sky's advice and I doubled up on the end uh, magnet. I have two of these now on each end and that does stabilize it. Um, and of course, it's only sitting up against one of the walls. It runs kind of freely on the other wall there, which is the right way to do it. And I noticed that when it's running, if it's making a racket, if I just hold this, it stops. So it stops making that racket and starts humming. So that tells me that there's some play in here, which there's to be expected. This is not, you know, this is not uh, done by any professional engineer. Um, I'm a hack, if anything. Well, I would, yeah, I guess so. But anyway... It's running really well, especially for the end to be completely 3D printed with a smaller piece of the 304 stainless steel in the end there. And it, it seems to be working okay. I don't know how long it's going to hold up for. Here, let's kick it on just to see. Yeah, see, it's running really nice now. Really nice. That's at 10 volts. See, it gets into a nice hum. There it goes. Until it's picking up speed. I can't tell if it's up against this wall or this wall. Yeah, it's making a racket now. See, I'm not getting the kicking play that I want to get. When you go like this, it should be going clink, 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 which means I have to loosen up this end and slide it back like a half a millimeter. Or I have to decrease the space between here and here, which I think I'm going to do. That will forcefully push the rotor in this direction because I do want it. Oh, maybe I should try it the other way and force it to go in that direction. Anyway, it's working nice. Um... I like it. I like the way this setup worked with the 3D printed parts. Again, this is a 3D printed pulse motor channel, if there's such a thing. And I wanted the majority of it to be 3D printed. I still like the way this guy came out. When it finds its center part, it hums really nicely. Um, I like this rotor housing better than this one. This is an old one that had uh, four magnets at one point. It only has the two now because we discovered, or Sky discovered, that we had too much flux going on. And it was interfering with the operation of the pulse motor. All right, let me play around here and I'll bring you guys back. Stay tuned. Not sure if you guys notice how this is set up, how the coil is set up in here. With this guy, I had it in, I had this um, right size bearing um, magnet housing in these mount holes, which put the rotor over here. I had to actually go back to my original holes, which is where you could see where this used to be. <laughs> So I was able to offset it. What I'm going to do is probably take this apart, move it more towards the center, but in a way that can go in either direction. This does not have to be in the center of this in order for it to work. Um, so I can approximate 
the positioning, um, but it's making it hard for this hall sensor to get fitted in there. Here, let's take a quick jaunt and see what happens. Because it does sometimes self-start. I'm getting a lot of output. I got to get a tack on there to see how fast it's going. Again, it's only at 10 volts. Let's turn it off. Let's, I got to figure out where that sound's coming from. I think I have an idea. But yeah, it self-starts. This is a beautiful circuit that Sky made. It's gorgeous. All the components are staying nice and cool. Um, even the hall chip is staying cool. And it seems to like it up in a higher plane than in the middle. I used to try to put it in the middle. And what I could do is pull this out some because that seems to increase the power. But I want to get a tack on there. See how fast it's going. All right, stay tuned. Let me set that up. So it gets up to like 3,000 RPM, which isn't a whole lot, but 3,300, 3,200, and that's without adjusting anything or any type of uh, tuning, 3,300, 3,300, so yeah. It goes to about 3,200 RPM. Man, I got to figure out what makes that freaking noise because I got it so that it's right justified. I think. Maybe not. Anyway, about 3,000 RPM. I've had it up a little higher, but forgot to record it, but not much. Um... Yeah, I like it. It is a test because I wanted to use this stainless steel shaft and without having to go down to a freaking high price machine shop to have them machine it down to a smaller end here the way I did it on this one here. Um, I wanted to do it all with 3D printing. Yeah, so the last one, oops, the last one was 3,200 RPM. Not super high, but not too bad. Anyway, stay tuned. So just to let you guys in on the juggling act that I have to do in between each test. So I put washers in between the back plate and the back of the front plate to give me different distances to push this mag this rotor this these magnets out so the balancing act is to get it so it's just slightly pulling in but not so hard that it's grinding into the back plate which has been which it, it's been doing and i have to do this on both ends so I have to get this balancing act. So I need to actually adjust this one as well because it's pushing too far this way. And this one is pulling too hard this way. So I need to remove this washer. These washers right here. Ah, come on. I need to remove these washers, which will then bring this back plate in closer to these ring magnets, which I have two of here. And like I told you earlier, I have two magnets now. And let me tell you, it is hard to push that in there. Once you get it in, if the balancing act is just right, then it's no sweat. I can easily manipulate this, push it forwards and backwards, um, but until I get it in there, oy, oy, oy. Um, 
but I think I have it on the run. I think I need to uh, add one, add one washer to this and take one away from there. So I'll bring you back once it's up and running again. Just wanted to show you some of the behind the scenes nonsense I got to go through. But I love it. Ciao. So it's noisy. But I'm getting a higher RPM. You see, if I hold it, it's still really noisy. And I don't know why that is. Let me turn this off. I'm getting a lot of good output, though. really sure why it's so noisy this is all nice and stiff i have it only going on one you can hear that it spins really freely it's only it's only on one side oh it looks like it might be a little off balance which i mean yeah there's i mean none of this stuff is machined but man that's loud and it was weird because I had it humming before. Oh, boy. All right. But that was at 10 volts, and I had it up to almost 5,000 RPMs. Not that I'm trying to get it to go faster. I am. I'm, you know. <laughs> so, yeah. You can hear that. That's what it's supposed to do. Here, let's fire it up again. Uh-oh, something must have came loose because I don't... There it goes. See, when I play with the hall sensor and put it in different areas, I get different speeds. If I put it up too high, if I bring it out. Let's turn it off. I don't have the hall sensor secured and it's pushing the whole base all over the place. Yeah, I don't have the ability, although I'd like to, to be able to slide this in and out. I do, but I don't have it set up in such a way where it's dynamic or I can just do it when I want to. I have to set it up, lock it down, do it, and set it up, lock it down. I don't have that sky perfection. Um, but yeah, I did notice that the farther away the hall sensor is, and the hall sensor is staying nice and cool, and so is the transistor, which is nice, and the 555. But yeah, when I pull it back to right about there, let me try pulling the coil away from it a little bit. I'll bring you right back. Hold tight. So I pulled the coil back. You see the coil is sitting. And if I keep the... All right, I'm gonna play around with positioning the hall sensor. My wife is staring at me, so she must want something. Stay tuned. I figured out what the noise was. It is the, this guy, the 304, up against the aluminum, the aluminum uh, pieces I have, the backing pieces I have. You hear that? That's when it's pressing up against that one. 
And when it's pressing up against that one, it doesn't make a sound. So, yeah, I'm going to have to figure something out. Stay tuned. All right, until tomorrow. But I think what I'm going to try is, instead of having a point like this, I think I'm going to round it off. Because I've had a lot of success with the ball bearing uh, maglevs that I've produced. They've worked out really great. And so I think I'll take the back plate out, smooth it out. And then I think I'm going to round over. I'm going to make two more of these because these are interchangeable. And round it over and see what that does. Just an experiment. Anyway, there'll be more coming manana. Ciao.